Hey everyone, so in this video, I'm gonna show you an extremely easy way to minimize that stretch you get at the edge of a wide angle shot using a tilt shift lens. So for most, if not all, architectural photographers, we tend to have at least one wide angle lens in our camera bag. Realistically, most architectural photographers have a few of them. But if you've been in the field for any amount of time, sooner or later, the thought of purchasing a tilt shift lens has probably come up in your mind. Now, honestly, I'm not gonna dive too deep into all the advantages of shooting on a tilt shift lens for an architectural photographer, but I think the easiest way to sum it up is that these lenses help us as photographers change and move our field of view without actually having to physically move the camera. And they help us keep our vertical line straight in camera, so that way we don't have to do a bunch of skewing and cropping, and we just get to retain most most, if not all of the original image resolution. Typically, the first big advantage that comes to mind is when you're shooting the exterior of a big, tall building. So instead of taking your camera and physically pointing it up to capture the whole building, now you can keep the camera square and level and simply shift the lens up to capture the whole entire building. All the while, again, still keeping your vertical lines straight and parallel, as opposed to the lines converging when you physically point a camera up. Tilt shift lenses help out a lot with photographing interiors as well. Say you find your general composition, you take your camera, place it square and level on the tripod, and say you decide you want to get more ceiling in the shot. Well, instead of physically pointing the camera body up, you just shift the lens up to capture more ceiling. Or if you want to get a little bit more floor in the image, simply shift the lens down. They also help out a lot with creating some really interesting one-point perspectives. So instead of the standard one-point perspective where all the lines would basically converge in the exact center of the frame, we can now shift our field of view left or right, sometimes even diagonally. Like in this image where we start off with the standard one point perspective of this kitchen, but say we decide we'd like to have more refrigerator in the shot where we can simply shift to the left and capture more of the fridge. Or we can shift the other way and try to miss the fridge entirely. Again, all the while keeping our vertical line straight and the camera body never has to move. Now another big advantage, but dare I say lesser known advantage of these lenses is helping us as architectural photographers minimize that wide angle angle stretchy look, or I'll even use the word distortion, that tends to happen to subjects that are near the edge of the frame. What I mean is typically when you shoot with a wide angle lens, if a subject is near the edge of a frame, and especially if a subject is close to the edge and close to the camera as well, you're gonna see that image stretched out a bit horizontally. You ever been part of a group shot where there's a bunch of people together and someone's doing a fairly wide shot of the whole entire group and you're the one on the end, and when you look at the photo, you're absolutely horrified. Why does my head shape look so weird? Why do I look like I put on 50 pounds in the past half hour. It's because you're being stretched in the image. So to show you how a tilt shift lens can help minimize that wide angle stretch, I'm gonna call on the help of my handsome model with this specific shot of the kitchen. So for this shot, we'll be using the Sony a7 III, the Canon 24 millimeter tilt shift, and a Metabones adapter so we can use the Canon lens on the Sony body. So let's imagine I've decided on this specific composition where the edge of the microwave oven is pretty near to the left edge of the frame, and the back door frame that you see in the background is pretty close to the right side of the image as well. So that's it, that's the composition I've decided on. So let's take the shot at 24 millimeters, but no shifting. It's pretty much the same as if we were shooting on a 24 millimeter prime or at 24 millimeters on some kind of zoom lens. So let's take the shot. Okay, it's not that bad, the image is fine, it's okay. But as you can see, since the microwave is close to the camera and near the left side of the frame, there's a good amount of exaggerated stretch. How do we minimize that stretch then? First, make sure your shift function allows you to shift from left to right. But before you do any shifting, first, turn your camera towards the exaggeration. Turn your camera towards the exaggerated stretched side, in this case, to the left. Now again, the camera is staying in the same exact spot in relation to the room. We haven't moved the tripod at all. The only thing we're doing is rotating the camera towards the side that was stretched in the original shot. Then we shift the lens back to the right to regain that original composition we decided on earlier. And voila, 
there we have it. For a comparison's sake, here's a before and after, before, after, before, after. So while the composition in both images is pretty much the exact same, we've now made the space look a little bit more even, less cartoony, less, less stretch, less exaggerated. Two simple steps, turn into the exaggeration, shift back, turn in, shift back easiest way to remember the technique. I want to thank our handsome model for helping us demonstrate this specific technique. If it's your first time checking out any of my videos, make sure to comment, like, subscribe, all that classic YouTube stuff. If you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, make sure to hit the thumbs down button twice. That'll do it for this video. I appreciate you taking the time to watch and we'll see you guys on the next one.